we have more questions in here. So let's thank Leslie for uh, his discussion. Okay, uh, we cannot, I guess, you can hear me. <laughs> oh, great, we have so many people on. Okay, so the next talk is uh, um, by Richard uh, Waldinger from SRI, and he's going to talk about uh, synthesis of a unification algorithm, which of course the key of, uh, um, you know, Lots of programming type inference, uh, even C plus C plus the tablets. And Richard is the, okay. Why don't you start, Richard? Okay, let me see if I can share my screen. And Richard has been working on this uh, for a long time. Do you see it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. See my slide. Yes. Yep. Okay, I will start. Okay, I have the, included in my talk the, uh, the term uh, computational introspection. Now, what does that mean? What I mean is uh, we're asked, can we have a system which can examine its own component, uh, uh, reconstruct the own, uh, its own components, and possibly even improve its own components? And we're using unification as a test case because we're uh, in a framework of deductive program synthesis in which the program is constructed by a theorem proving uh, task. And uh, unification is a crucial element in the theorem provers that we're envisioning. So we're asking, uh, can the system look at its own unification algorithm and reconstruct it uh, in uh, possibly a better way. And then we can imagine that a system would be able to improve itself. Now, uh, the, the uh, uh, program synthesis uh, framework that we're using is one in which we uh, start with a specification and uh, rephrase that as a theorem. The specification says that for any uh, input entity E, there exists an output entity Z satisfying some input-output relation Q expressed in logic. And the corresponding theorem is that for every input entity E, there exists an output entity uh, Z that satisfies this input-output relation. And then we restrict the proof to be sufficiently constructive so that we can extract a program from the proof. And the structure of the program we obtain reflects the structure of the proof so that if we use case analysis in the proof, we get a conditional construct uh, like if then else in the program. If the proof uses uh, the principle of mathematical induction, we get recursion in the final program. And the proof is conducted in a, an axiomatic theory, the uh, uh, subject domain theory, which uh, gives us uh, the background information that we need to uh, do the uh, proof. Now for unification, our theory is a theory of symbolic expressions. So we have expressions, which uh, uh, we distinguish between atomic expressions and constants. Atomic expressions are divided uh, into constants and variables. And uh, constants are uh, the result of applying the cons operation, I'm sorry, the cons operation uh, uh, to two simpler, simpler expressions. And we have a bunch of axioms uh, for the uh, symbolic expressions, uh, like the left side of an expression is uh, the, the first argument of the cons. The right side of a, of a cons expression is the second argument of the cons. And there are many other axioms too. Now unification, uh, probably everyone is familiar with it. Uh, we wanna find a substitution that makes two uh, symbolic expressions identical. So for example, uh, this uh, uh, substitution is a unifier of these two expressions, replacing X with B over here and Y with A over here makes them identical to A cons B. Uh, but unifiers are not unique. For example, this uh, uh, substitution is also a unifier that replaces uh, Z with C, which is irrelevant, it doesn't appear anywhere, but it still will unify the uh, the expression, it does extra work. But what we uh, would like our algorithm to produce is a most general unifier, which uh, does no extra work. Now, uh, unification was implicit in the, uh, 
the thesis of Herr Braun in 1930, uh, but was really uh, was fleshed out in the Robinson's work uh, in, on the resolution principle from 1965, and was also taken up like in uh, term rewriting by Knuth and Bendix and other, uh, and also used in uh, logic programming. Now, uh, so to uh, uh, do the derivation, we need a theory of uh, expressions and substitutions. The, um, uh, the uh, uh, a fundamental operation in the theory of substitutions is the composition uh, function. The composition of two substitutions is a, a substitution that has the effect of doing first the first substitution and then applying the second substitution to the result. And we use composition to describe the, mo the more general relation, which is uh, important for unification. Uh, a substitution is more general than a second substitution if you can get from the first substitution uh, to the second substitution by composing it with some third uh, substitution, the so-called bridge substitution, which is not unique either. So uh, initially we started with this specification for a most general unifier. We want to find a substitution theta which is, uh, first of all, it's a unifier. And second of all, it's more general than any uh, unifier. So if theta prime is some unifier, uh, we can get from theta to theta prime by composition with some bridge substitution theta double prime. That's in the positive case in which there exists a unifier, but it could be that the expressions are uh, not unifiable, in which case we, uh, uh, return a special symbol fail, which says that I cannot uh, unify these two expressions. So from this, from this specification, we start with a theorem uh, that for, for all inputs, uh, E1 and E2, there exists an output theta that satisfies this, uh, uh, theta satisfies this, uh, this condition. But lo and behold, the proof fails. We cannot, we, uh, we cannot complete the proof. Why is that? Well, there's a phenomenon that uh, uh, George Polya uh, uh, recognized in his uh, book, How to Solve It, that it, at sometimes it's easier to prove a stronger theorem uh, than a weaker theorem, uh, even if the stronger theorem has extra conditions. And in an induction proof, uh, proof by mathematical induction, this uh, occurs often because uh, if we have a stronger theorem, we uh, also have a stronger induction hypothesis. And the strong induction hypothesis uh, helps us prove the stronger theorem, even though the stronger theorem has, has the extra conditions. And this was exploited by the boyer moore theorem prover and is, uh, which always generalizes the theorem before it tries to prove it. Now in our unification case, uh, we found it necessary to add uh, the condition, not only that, that, that theta is a, uh, uh, most general unifier, but also it is, it is idempotent. Idempotent means that applying, applying the substitution twice has the same effect as applying it once. So for example, this substitution here is not idempotent because uh, applying it once replaces x with y, applying it twice uh, replaces that y with a. So the net effect of doing it twice is to replace, apply, is to replace x with a, not y. So it's uh, doing it twice has an additional effect. So our stronger specification uh, involves uh, uh, in requiring that the substitution be eaten potent. Now in finding a, a way to express this uh, concisely, we also found uh, a simplification in the theory obtained by uh, taking the failure substitution and regarding it as a kind of substitution, taking the failure, the failure uh, object regarding it as a substitution. So we can apply, apply the failure object to any expression. And we uh, 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 axiomatize arbitrarily that this is going to be some constant called the black hole. And since every expression gets mapped into the black hole, failure becomes a unifier for all expressions. We can, uh, 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 under, under failure, all expressions are, are unifiable. And also, we're uh, forced to uh, uh, 
assume that the composition of failure with any substitution is failure itself. So you uh, uh, you never get anything anything by composing a uh, anything but failure by composing a substitution with failure. So in particular, this implies that failure it cannot be more general than any uh, uh, proper substitution because if you compose you, you cannot apply a bridge any there's no bridge to uh, failure which will make it be anything but failure so our strength in spe specification is that the unification algorithm that we're trying to construct must satisfy the property for, for the be a unifier and it has this condition which which uh, uh, expresses concisely that it's most general and idempotent it's uh, most general, of course, because we're we have we're using the the substitution. If if we have any unifier, uh, we take that unifier and use it as the bridge, uh, and and it goes from uh, theta to this this any this other unifier, and it's even potent. We can see by taking theta prime to be theta itself, since theta is also a unifier, we get that taking theta prime to be theta, we get the theta composed with theta is theta. So this is so this is. Uh, uh, expresses both most generality and, and idempotence. And this uh, st uh, strength and specification was developed not, not by the theorem prover, but uh, by our own manipulation of the, uh, of the theory. We don't know how to, how to discover it automatically. So we take this as our initial specification for the uh, unification algorithm. Now, uh, in our original work, I uh, had a paper with Zoramana from 1981 on unification, and by hand, this was all done uh, manually. Uh, we uh, um, developed this algorithm, which applies unification recursively to the left-hand sides of the uh, expressions that we're trying to unify. Then we have a, a case analysis. If this fails, then our unification algorithm will fail. Otherwise, we plug in that substitution to the right-hand side and try to unify the right-hand sides. If that fails, there's another case analysis, if that fails, we uh, are gonna fail, our whole algorithm will fail. Otherwise, we take the two uh, uh, unify, unifiers that we got from the recursive call and compose them, and this becomes the unification algorithm to uh, uh, uni the result of unification. And this is in the, in the case in which the two expressions are not, are not atomic, atomic is a special, is a, a, a different case which I'm not, not describing here. The, um, uh, now in uh, our work in, uh, in our new work, we're, we're trying to do, do everything automatically using a theorem prover SNARK developed by Mark Stickle, first order logic theorem prover uh, that's been around a long time. And SNARK uh, in this case came up with a, uh, an algorithm that surprised us in that we don't do any case analysis. We unify the left-hand sides, plug it into the right-hand side, and um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, we we get uh, uh, and we just compose the results without testing to see to see uh, if they fail. Why do why does it why does this correct? Because in the case either of these fails, the composition fails. So it does the case analysis. Uh, we we just have the uh, the uh, composition do the case analysis instead of instead of having our algorithm. So the, so that that uh, step was uh, irrelevant. It was something that we didn't we didn't uh, anticipate. It. I thought it was a mistake when I uh, first saw the saw the proof. So this suggests that um, we uh, might um, might uh, be able to uh, apply an automatic theorem prover and discover things that we. We didn't. Uh, uh, we didn't uh, anticipate ourselves. Uh, now I. Uh, I have a link in the uh, paper. Uh, there's a link to the proof, which is a 40-line step uh, snark proof, which uh, no one has ever read except for snark. I never read it myself, uh, but I. I believe <laughs> that snark probably probably uh, is correct, and uh, but you can look at it, and if you see, uh, see any mistakes, tell me, and I'll. Oh, okay. All right. Well, our our time is up for okay, this one. Well, I, uh, yeah. Let me just say uh, one uh, well, use for this work is possibly to develop 
special purpose unification algorithms for uh, other theories. We already know what the unification is for, for symbolic expressions, but if we want to add additional axioms to the theory, we may be able to uh, extract, uh, uh, extract new programs which give better unification for the special theory. And now I've used 14 and a half minutes, which I, uh, I think I'm still under time. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the way, even during the, the uh, panel, you can show slides. Okay. I, I think we can save questions for the for the panel just in your know, fifth minutes. All right. Okay. I, I just showed the, the beginning of the proof in case anyone. Yeah. Uh, let's. Uh, this, uh, and if anyone doesn't believe that Snark did it. Okay. okay. Let's, so let's thank Richard. We can look at this uh, later. Or you have. You want to, 